the proposed use of two rooms to accommodate staff would not substantially undermine the purposes for which the James Coming Room was established. And so, um, as users of the James Coming Room for many years, the Garden Club have never been consulted and never been asked about it. And in fact, when we first came and said, look, will we still be able to have a show here? They said, not probably this year, but um, maybe it'll, it could be about 18 months was the initial thing to um, do the library up and put them back where they were so that the general public could keep um, this amazing facility. And so I'd like the council to consider um, what they're doing because it is a lack of consultation and we would really like it to stay as a community centre. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just before you run off. Yeah. Just, uh, I'll just open up to the uh, questions. Obviously, the first question I had, and thank you for the submission. Um, uh, first question, so we've had one, one lot of uh, the apprentice help yeah, uh, anyway, but is it used? It's obviously in other rooms. And yes. So they use it every month. Monthly. Yeah. And then there's a, an exhibition that uses the hall on. And often it's the whole complex that we hire out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, an annual. Yes. That does every a, February. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just see if any of the councillors <laughs> wish to ask any questions of Mrs. <laughs> Thompson. So the. Um, Thanks, Doreen. Um, the, the use of the hall is a, it's just a once, well, you know, I guess Richard's asked that question, it's annual, it's just a once a year, isn't it? That we use the main hall, yeah. but we use the other rooms, yes. yes. So, am I right in saying, I might be completely wrong, tell me if I am. So I think, I feel as I've been to Garden Club. You have been there, events. yes, you have. Yes. Uh, both down there and also at the TNC? Yes. Right, so using the TNC, do you use the TNC often then? Only, only because we can't use this. Oh, okay. Yes. So that was last year? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we did use it the year before. We had a combined New Zealand Dahlia, um, National mm -hmm. Dahlia show combined with our show, and it wasn't big enough and we used the town and country, but normally it is just too big for our show on its own. Right. Yeah. And it's also out of town, so the children can't walk here from across the road and from Hall Main. And um, they they support it and they put in lots of entries. And then on the Saturday they bring all their folks, so it's a really big part of our show to come for the community as well. Yeah. Any other questions from councillors? Just for the notes, um, obviously the uh, document that you referred to there has been. Um, attached to the minutes of it, so it's got to be from the upside of council that we have been the banners. Um, yeah, it's all it's all yeah. Yeah. Anything else from you? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. If we move into the um, agenda item, I think the CEO is going to. Address us on the proposal for the uh, document we have before us in regard to the upgrade. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Um, and look, uh, I think the first thing to emphasize here is that um, we are, as we know, living and working in uh, extraordinary times, and COVID 19 has thrown those, those up. Uh, so uh, this particular project that's now before the council has um, really come, has come into view as a result of COVID-19 and the government's shovel ready initiatives. Uh, those initiatives were uh, framed very rapidly following the level four lockdown decision uh, announced on the 23rd of March and enacted on the 25th of March. Uh, and it was towards the end of that month, uh, early, early April, that we got, um, we the council staff, um, wind of the government initiative of shovel ready. Uh, application forms followed in the next few days, and it was pretty much about 10 days maximum that we had to compile business cases on <clears throat> what was deemed to be shovel ready projects. 
Uh, I've spent a bit of time report, Mr. Chairman, just talking about the evolution of the library and its issues and how it came to be in the James Cummins win. Um, and the, the key point, which I guess I need to um, make that uh, answers in part some of the concerns of the uh, speaker you just had before you, is that the application to the government made the point that while library design was reasonably, um, we were pretty confident that like, we could produce that reasonably quickly. The issue of the range of community space that would need to be encompassed in the project was the subject of the conversation with the community. Uh, so a big part of the report is talking about that conversation uh, and, and it goes to the heart of what does that community space look like um, in terms of the numbers of rooms, uh, the size of rooms, uh, and analysing the, the need for those rooms uh, now that um, 50 years has passed since the design of James Cummings Wing was put forward and uh, close to 60 years has passed since the interpretation of James Cummings Will was provided uh, and the will itself uh, which was granted probate uh, in 1946. So I put those dates out there to, to just show how long it has been uh, since those initial intentions, uh, well founded, founded as they were, of uh, trustees and the deceased person himself. Um, and the question I guess to overlay of all, of all of this is around what is the contemporary needs of community in 2020 and how can they still be secured? Uh, having regard to the spirit of the original question. So there's a lot of questions there, Mr Chairman, around what the community may need. Um, we live in a very urgent and somewhat imperfect world, uh, and the notion that the government, the government would give this council a sum of $3 million for a library project or even a community rooms project it's unheard of in my time of government, which now spans the 15 and 30 years. So I, I put that out, out there to just um, to appreciate that I think the, um, the importance of the decision that we've been given by the government. Uh, and secondly, the need to crack on. Uh, the government, in the four magnets announcements, was in touch with me um, orally and wanted to tease this project out along with the MLT event centre uh, and wanted assurances that it was indeed shovel ready and I did certainly give them the caveat that it still needed to be consultation engagement with the community on the community room aspect along with design features in the new library. Um, so the expectation of government is that we will move quickly and hence the timetabling in the report sets out uh, a fairly rapid fire process, but a very dedicated process for community engagement with details of which uh, our communications manager, Mrs. Gurk, was here to um, answer any more detailed questions about. Um, the, there may be some questions around project budget. Again, these um, we did determine, determine them on two things. One, I guess, is the feedback from the community in regard to the engagement process and features that may be sought uh, by the community and then incorporated into the project. The other is that we need to be upfront here that when we put forward this proposal to the government, we only had a rough order of cost based on the square mirage uh, and uh, aided and defeated somewhat by the experience of the next door Pacific administration building upgrade. So the $5.5 million rough order cost is that, and really it won't get burned until such time as we have a, a firm design, which is dependent again upon the engagement process of the community. If I keep coming back to the engagement process of the community, uh, it really is because it's important um, a part of the project uh, needs to be done well. We need to get the right um, feedback from the community to get this right, but that doesn't uh, suggest in our view that it has to be uh, elongated and bogged down with um, paralysis by analysis. We just need to have a user friendly process uh, with both digital platform, hard copies, so people can put forth their views 
and then we can then work with the design team to arrive at hopefully one of the optimal solution that pleases most of the people most of the time. Um, that's probably it in a nutshell, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's an exciting project, but it's challenging on a number of fronts, uh, one of which I think will be the notion of what we've always had versus what we might be able to have through imagination and um, a little bit of um, courageousness in, in terms of our decision making. Say courage, not courage. Thank you. Okay, um, so we've got the, most of us will read through uh, the various uh, sections on the proposal that we have in front of us. Um, obviously, one of the uh, big things we open up for discussion amongst the councillors, and uh, in reference to Thomas as well, uh, the fact that there was an emphasis on feedback of the community and the consultation process that was going to take place uh, in regard to the community. I'm just prior to starting, I had one question um, regarding the two rooms that were taken over. They are the, the new council buildings, refreshing my memory. They, the, the rooms have been used every return. Correct, Mr. Chief. Other panels with Phil James coming. Yes. For, for, um, yes, the civil administration building design was on the basis that all staff of GEC are repatriated back to that building. Okay. So I'll just open up for discussion amongst the um, councillors. Thank you. Um, through the Chair, I just asked the EO, the community consultation, do we have a time frame on that? Tight time frame? Or? Uh, through you, Mr Chairman, I will let Sonny explain in detail, but uh, there's no set free time frame set, uh, but the only time frame is set is that we're not, uh, we need to have a uh, compelling but uh, reasonably short, so we're thinking three weeks or so. Uh, through the chair, yes, um, I'm just completing a, a bit of a um, timeline today. So we're, um, we'll be launching it next Wednesday once the proposal is through the public council meeting and we'll be using the digital platform. So we've been um, community conversation workshops and we're to what we've done on the slide to give information for people. So we would hope to have those all um, wrapped up for three weeks. And then, of course, there is um, a little bit of time to actually analyze the information we give them. That is usually the hardest part, getting the information in the front, analyze that, and then we can feed that information back to the um, design team. The really important part of the whole process, though, is that we're actually going back to the community with the outcome of that. We need people know closing that conversation with people know, you know what's happened with the, the information they've given us. That, so, you know, that, that will also continue on for the to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, I've got uh, great concerns about this. First of all, I've got concerns about the 5.5 million project at a rough order of cost. We've already seen once before a project that's escalated out of, out of control. And we haven't seen any plans, we haven't seen a thing. And I'm very concerned about what I see in front of me. The other thing that I question I ask is, how do we bring forward the 1.1 million for the roof repair of the existing library into this project? What happens to the library? Who, who pays for it to get it, the roof repaired? The, the library, Building will be the subject of uh, another report and process uh, in terms of its future use. Uh, yes, the issue still remains, um, but I only reference that amount is that that was an allocation the council had in its current LTP, uh, to, which was associated with the library activity. Correct. That's correct. So, how do we bring forward that money to this project? Why are we allowed to? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, because what sum of 1.1 million was allocated to a library building to uh, future proof that activity. Um, so, in my analysis that's allocated to the library activity. Um, if the council uh, wanted to re uh, allocate that funds for 
uh, another library project, but not on that site. Um, that would seem to be in order in terms of how you, you look at your significance and engagement policy in terms of expending money on the library upgrade. Yeah, Mr. Chair, don't, look, don't get me wrong here. I, I congratulate the staff on getting them three million. What concerns me is the rest of the money that we have to find. Yeah. You know, we haven't got a bottomless pit of money. The ratepayers are struggling now. All of a sudden, we're going to spend 5.5 million less the 1.1 because we have to replace the roof at the library to make the building either sellable or used in some way. So technically, we've only got 4.4 million. So, if I could stop. sorry, um, just uh, in my mind, um, I think council's got a couple of challenges in front of them. Um, and we all know only too well uh, the limitations and the, the current state of the complete games coming in. We know the, the state of the, the current library building, and we know that it's a responsibility to, to, um, to provide a service, both a library service and um, a, a meeting room service for the community. So I think that in my mind, the, the critical thing is um, connecting with the community now with some options that, that would include potential funding options um, to talk about what the desire of the community is. And, and while we've only got a short time, um, I think that we do need to, to make haste um, because um, the the basis of the, the three million dollars, and this shouldn't be totally driven by three million dollars, but they're going to, it is going to be an impact. So there's no doubt about that. The basis of the three million dollars is it's ready to go. So um, we need to know what the general feeling of the community is, and and I know that the building, for both buildings actually, both the library building and the James Cumming building, um, were designed and built in an age that is a number of years ago and and the world has is slightly altered in the way that we use um, some of those services uh, in, in this current time and i know the use of the hall um, i know the use rates of the hall uh, i know the use rates of the uh, of the community rooms i know the the opportunities and the challenges that the current library or the previous library building had and, and looking at what is um, provided in other communities and uh, the use that those, um, those facilities get as compared to the use of the facilities here. And, and whatever we do, uh, and, and I'm very mindful that whatever we do won't be decided here today, it will be started after we talk to the community. Um, whatever we do really has to be proving us for the future uh, for the next 30 or 40 years. And even if, if we look back 30 years ago, um, the needs and purposes of, of um, both those properties has changed significantly. And, and looking forward, I'm sure that um the the changes will be even as dramatic uh in the future as they have been in the past so i think that the critical thing here is now um let's talk to the community about what we think the options are and if they if the community says uh in great volume that we either agree with that or we don't agree with that then we should take that on board Sorry, sorry, thank you, um, thank you Your Worship, but Mr. Chairman, I understand all this, right? I understand what we're going to be doing for the future. What I don't understand is the money that we're having to borrow to do this project, and, and herein lies my problem. We can't afford it. If, if, I, gave you the, if I gave you the million dollars, I'll make it up to a million dollars, no problem at all with the, with the MBM fund. And the three, if you can't do the project inside that, then we shouldn't do it. So that may be one of the constraints that is 
Well, I, I don't see I don't see that here, Mr. Chairman. I don't see that here as one of the recommendations, mm -hmm. and that's my problem. Look, I think we've got to be very careful about getting too defined in what we're we're asking the community. We're saying we've got a challenge with the the previous library. We've got a challenge with our current James Cumming wing. Neither of them meet the purposes for the future. Uh, we've got an opportunity for some funding. Do you want to take that up or don't you? Now, if you don't, then that's fine. That's a call the community will make. Um, but we need to listen to them before we make any decisions because it's not your money or my money, it's their money. And they need to have a say in this. Just, just in reference to that, obviously, what's recommended before here is not ratifying that that amount is actually going forward. If I'm correct, that we're only going into the engagement pro process. Um, the only issue would be for Councillor Phillips is it a uh, fact that the 1.1 million is tied to a shovelry application of 3 million in the, in the 1 million for the Tarabelli? Do we, do we need that contribution to yeah. facilitate or through Mr. Chairman, the, the 5.5 million was a QS rough water cost on a school meter rate um, on a, for a comprehensive upgrade of this complex. Um, it would provide you a useful guide because if the council was in mind to say, no, let's just push the library back to where it was and do the 1.1 million roof upgrade. The question the council had for itself is, okay, then what do you do with James Cumberland? Because it will, it will sit there and it will look particularly untidy compared to next door. And I suspect the committee will say, council, you've got to, you've had this money 50 years ago, you need to look after the, the asset. Um, and those of you who've done building projects know that it's very hard to just focus on one thing and not comprehensively address all the issues. So that's, that needs to be, uh, I think, a factor in your mind that um, this the problem of this this building has is 50 years old, nearly, um, and is due for a major upgrade in some shape or form. Councillor McNeill. Yeah, so I'm a member of the committee and I'd like to speak. Actually, Councillor Phillips took the words right out of my mouth, uh, exactly on, the, on what he said. And I fully support what he's saying about the building. And he's going to upgrade this building on commits for four million dollars. And I've been in the building industry for it's just how you go about it. And you've got to tell your people that, that are preparing the work that that's your budget and they will work in with you and you'll come up with a good design and a good answer. If you give them five foot and five million, they'll spend it. If you give them 10 million, they'll spend it. Because I know how architects like to make glorious buildings. It's like that facade out the front of this building here with these big pillars. If I was on that building, they wouldn't be there. They're a waste of time, money and space. So you, you make it functional, but you don't do any fancy rubbish at the front, which we've got out the front here with these big pillars up there. They probably cost 50 or 60 grand to put that in. I'd wipe them out tomorrow with the digger. Boom. Don't need them. They don't do anything to the building, only cost you more maintenance. So Let's keep the thing to the real basics, what we need, and deal with that. And then you'll get your $4 million project over the line without any trouble. No flowery stuff, nothing. So that, that's what I wanted to say here today. Well, as I said, the initial bit written down here is almost word for word by Councillor Phillips. So that's my piece there. Mr. Chair, if I can just, just briefly respond uh, to Stuart. We've got to, and I've said this before, we've got to get ourselves out of this trap of making decisions before we talk to the community. But we, we're assuming that everybody thinks like us as individuals. Actually, I mean, we're elected here to represent them. But when we get to a decision like this, then we've got to go and talk to them. And that's, that's part of the rules that, that we work under. And we need to understand what the aims and the desires uh, and the limitations that the community sets on us for um, for the use of the, the building into the future and out of that will fall whatever the cost is is um we're just going we i guess to be fair as a council um consultation um is not one of our strengths you know in the past 
Um, I think that we've got to be much more focused on engagement uh, rather than just consultation. And engagement really is, means starting at the, at the beginning with a community or with an affected party. And in this situation, and we're finding ourselves in one or two of these situations, but in, in this situation, where the timing of this is, is forced upon us, but we've still got time to talk to the community. Now, there's ideas that have been floated, we need to share those, and we'll be told very clearly, I'm sure, whether people like them or they don't. Uh, if they do, that's fine. If they don't, then what's the alternative? Because we've got a very limited time to make use of this money. And if, if people say we don't want that, then that's fine. Um, well, it's not fine with me, um, but it's it's fine, and that, that'll be the process. And we, as a community then, will need to sit down and talk about what are we going to do with this particular complex, and what are we going to do with the, co the library, and how are we going to fund it? And my guess is that it won't be much short of what we're talking about here in terms of dollars, and it will be totally funded by the late parts uh, over, over a period of time. And just, like, just to illustrate, or well, my mind anyway, to illustrate the change of use of, of facilities over time, this very room we're in now, beneath the floor, is the, um, is the lecture theatre. I suspect that in the last six months, this room's had more use in, in those six months than it's had in 10 years. So it, it, was, it was needed and it was, had a really good purpose um, when it was built. I'm not sure that, that purpose is quite the same now. And when you think about what the future will be and whatever we do, we're gonna to have to design something and, and cater for changing requirements. In a, in a building like this, there's some very fixed definitions around the rooms, the size of the rooms and the use of the rooms. Uh, whatever happens either here or across the road at the other library, the old library, you know, there's going to have to be multi-use designed into that because the way we work now, it's not going to be what the future is. But we can't sit around this table and pretend to be experts. We need to hear, just hear what our community's desires are for a library and for meeting rooms into the future. If those two coincide, then that's great. If they don't, then so be it. We just have to look at some other alternatives. Uh, Councillor Reid, Councillor Davis. Thank you, uh, Councillor McFarr. Um, I'd just like to think that when we do put this out for consultation, that perhaps the angle we should take, I don't mean angle per se, but you know, we need to think of it as a community hub and will we have our library enclosed within that hub? I think that's the, you know, the public need to understand that the, the use of the rooms will still be there and maybe we do or do not include the library. I just, I think it's all in how the public gets to that point that um, the usage will still be here, but they'll also have the benefit of having the library close at hand as well. Thank you, Mr. Uh, um, what's the process, I'm gonna ask Sonia, what's the process from here in as far as consultate, uh, consultation? What does it look like? Um, it looks like um, launching with next week um, on a digital platform with advertising um, across all levels of media. The um, library staff will already start talking to people and we'll be getting um, people filling card with their, with their email address so we can send direct invitations to them to be part of the conversation. We'll also be advertising and calling for people to um, register to be involved in the community conversation workshops, which will be facilitated um, on the stage of the end of the month. Then it's getting all those ideas that people have in their comments on whether they, as you say, whether they um, go, want this or what they want to do in the building, what they see, that their, their ideas and aspirations, I suppose, um, for this as a community space. It is, it is a core cool library and community space mm -hmm. development. That's, that's the title. Um, so I suppose our aim is to get that social license um, for the council then to move forward. So will there be any visuals like 
we've got some great examples of other libraries around the country that have massive community spaces in, within the library, um, which would go some way towards the Garden Club's concerns and possibly other users' concerns as well. So are we going to, are they going to be able to go and look through some other examples? Yeah, for each year, yes, definitely. Uh, Visualisation is very part of a very large part of trying to, um, to promote and stimulate the conversation and the ideation. So, um, yes, I'm just waiting now to get some um, strong visuals um, from the architects of the exterior of this building as well as um, what other um, new purpose built libraries slash community spaces look like. Perhaps. Um, just so people can actually yeah, see what the potential might be. And of course, always work on that. Because um, through you, Mr. Chair, a library, a future library is more about community space and a library. It's not about the library, it's more about the space that's av available to the community within that library. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dixon. Oh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I'm just wondering if the submissions will be open to other community use for the library, and will they know um, that we're going? to borrow another 1.1 million, will they have that option as well to make that choice? Or is that to come later? I mean, how, I'm just trying to clarify how all this will be put to the public so that they can make a decision whether we go to the rate payers for that extra 1.1 million. Mr. Chairman, that's a secondary step. Uh, so as I said before, my introduction remarks, the consultation and engagement process is designed to get community feedback. So uh, around the library and community space and what it should look like, uh, and that will help inform the design team to come up with a plan. And with that plan, then you come up with an updated estimate, whatever that may be. Uh, and that point, at that time, it would be to the council to say, okay, this is the, the subject of the community consultation. Here's the concept. Here's an updated estimate. What does that mean in terms of our overall budget? Uh, do we forge ahead or do we change the game plan? So it's really a second question. I have another question as well. Yeah. Um, so if the, if the community decided to change the use and not they didn't want a library there, that funding is not available any longer for the upgrade of the games coming week. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I've yet to receive the actual funding documents from the government. They've been a bit delayed. Uh, but bear in mind two things. One, that the project was promoted to the government on the basis of a library come community rooms. Uh, and secondly, because it came via the council and the council signed off on that concept uh, before the funding application was sent to Wellington, uh, it would it would probably be difficult to change um, the game plan so substantially and still retain the funding, but that's that would be a, a, a subject of a further conversation with government should that arise. Mr. Chair, just um, a question around timing and then directed to Steve. Uh, once we've engaged with the community and got some ideas and done what you've just said in terms of analysing that and what it might look like in um, structural form and also what it might cost, we will council make a call on going forward. Will it be October? October, November. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Plans to have a, a settled floor plan and upgrade plan by October. And so with that, we come price and then to council for Yes, we're good to go, or no, we need to revise our, our strategy. Councillor Brown. Um, thank you. Fully support what Neville's saying um, about the money expenditure and everything, but I suppose the bottom line is we have to ask the community are we moving the library back to its existing like, we are normal location, or, or are we not? Um, I, I know, like, personally, I know the trades are just starting to slow down now. Um, so you're just sort of looking at people that are still restructuring building companies and all that. So are we going to have the sustained amount of money still coming into family homes? 
are we starting to slow, well, I know they're starting to slow down now. Um, so it's, I know the money's great and it'd be nice to have, but do we, is it the right time? So just in response, Nick, um, irrespective of whether this concept flies or doesn't, um, we're still going to have to find a permanent home for the library. And that's going to require expenditure uh, if, we, if we're serious about providing a, a facility that's going to um, cope with the future needs of the library. Um, and if that means going back to the original site, that's fine. But also spawns the discussion about what we do next door, or what we do here, actually, uh, and how that's funded. So um, we've just got to be got to be careful about whether we um, or how we how we approach this is either an opportunity or a problem, and make the most. I believe make the most of that opportunity that's presenting itself to us now. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; I'm not driven by money on this this project. If we can get into the library, into the in this building, and the community wanted in this building, that's fine. What I'm saying is that is it affordable? That's the most important thing. Is it affordable? You know, like we've got lots of projects to come forward, and there is going to be big expenditure. We've only got so much to come from. <laughs> Unfortunately, as Steve just said, it's probably a wrong time, probably scenario. If it had happened last year, it would have been as good as gold, wouldn't it? We would have been fine. I don't think I think we can do this on the budget of four million. If we can do this on the budget of four million, then everything will be great. It wouldn't be a problem. No, I guess if that <laughs> come and shut up, Mr. Chair. Um, if, if that if, if four million and gives you what the community says they want, then that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But if four million doesn't, then... Then we have to seriously think about where the money comes from yeah. and is it, a, is it the right thing to do or the right time to do it? That's right. And that, that's not, to be fair, not now. No, that's, no, that's but what I'm saying... About two months' time. Yeah, uh, but it's the recommendations that are put to me for this meeting that I don't agree with. And there's one or two things I'd like to change in them when we come to that part, Mr. Chairman. So, any other councillors you want to councillor Davis? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The way I see it, if we put the library back where it was, we don't get we don't get the three million dollars funding. So that's gone. You can forget that. Then you've got to still upgrade that building, and then you've still got to upgrade this building at a cost of goodness knows what to the ratepayer, and we've got to fund all of it. If we have the library here, we've got guaranteed $4 million worth of funding. We can't turn that down. So I think we need to go to the community for consultation on the basis that the library is in this building with the community spaces, and when it comes time for the, for the plans and what have you, then the councillors can get out their pencils and say, well, what about the budget? It's got to be around, you know, we want it to be more like four million instead of five. That's the point where you can you can say, and we can argue the toss over the budget. But I think for for the purpose of this meeting, we need to agree to put it out for consultation. Thank you. So um, obviously that's almost part of the motion we have other than the dollar, dollar value of our estimate. So how does that tie with, with what we've formed with regard to obtaining that funding and what we were contributing? Oh, no, that's the, um, the application to be fair to the council was just, look, this is an idea, shovel ready, this is the price. Um, we hope we get them off. We've got a fair decent uh, head start towards it. And Mr. Chair, I think before councillors put themselves into a corner and, and have hard and fast positions, um, I would encourage them to think about the other aspects that are going on at the moment with government funding that may um, soothe the financial outlook of the council. 
So there's an announcement yesterday, which I was going to give a, a briefing uh, to you uh, after this meeting, uh, that attaches um, money, uh, significant portions thereof, uh, to our three waters area. Uh, bear in mind also, Shovel already gave us a million dollars that we would have faced with our next budget for the issues we have on the sports complex. They have now been taken care of. So it's easy to look at this in isolation, but look at the wider picture. Now, obviously, the wider picture will um, come into full view as we prepare for the next long term plan. And by December, we hope to have some kind of um, rough indicative budget for the next uh, 10 years. Uh, but just be aware there's other things going on that potentially could have um, a soothing aspect to Council's financial forecast. Um, with this COVID-19 situation. And because there are a number of projects, Mr. Chairman, that we're still waiting on confirmation or otherwise uh, from the government in regard to Shovel Ready. And I'm reliably informed that announcements in that area are expected between now and a certain day in September where we will go to the polls. More discussion from that. Um, just a, um, a question rather than a, an observation, I guess, is that in the room, just looking at the recommendations we've got there, we've got the filing, um, that note around the 5.5 million as rough order of costs, that's, that's really just reflecting what has already been said. It's not, yes. It's, that's not tying this project to 5 million. Five million dollars. Mr. Chairman, not at all. That's why I said that this this will be uh, updated as the plan emerges following engagement. And you notice that the words here are uh, note, and the only two two aspects you're asked to kind of give approval to is an engagement plan for public uh, and for the design team that uh, we want to bring on board who have done a splendid job with the civic administration building next door. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I would prefer to see that the rough order of cost be four million, because then if it's more, then you can make a decision about that 1.5 million over and above that. We don't know that. No, but I, I think if we aim for something. But no, this is not about an aim. This, this is re reflecting what the, the, um, the quantity surveyor who looked at the project when it just looked at a very quick, rough order of costs when the application has been made, so it's going to cost you around that risk. So that's that's a quantified figure, but that doesn't necessarily need to be the figure that it ends up at. But I don't know that we can just say rough order of costs can be $4 million, because it may not be, might be three, might be five. Nice. So why do we have to put the five? I, I'm wondering if it needs to be reflected in the recommendations. Mm -hmm. The appetite that we've seen here is obviously not mm -hmm. that amount. Yeah, okay. that, that's fine, but that's not really the discussion for today, I don't believe. We could just note that the budget, the council has a budget of $4 million for the project. We could just put that and then that possibly could be more. Yeah, a potential budget of four million dollars. Yeah. Which is inclusive of the shovel in uh, shovel ready funding uh, in the Well, Mr. Chairman, by way of trying to bridge a, a gap, I think it's very important that we don't mislead um, either um, the public on either side of the divide of this project. Uh, and so I wonder for completeness whether it should be that. Uh, the count that you note, I just got my lost my screen. Note that the um, uh, funding for the project uh, is four million, and then the current rough order of cost is five point five. So at least it alerts any reader that there is a gap that needs to be bridged. Well, therefore, Mr. Chair, therefore, Mr. Chairman, that we take out then the balance that be contributed by the way of a loan then. Written in there. That decision has to be made by the full council, Mr. Chairman. And the rate payer. So, 
as we see the recommendations. Uh, I'd like that. I'd like that bit removed, Mr. Chairman. Move the rough order. Yes, thank you. No, not that. No, no. 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 The balance contributed by the council, by the way, of alone. So at present, we take that paragraph out of line out from until such time as a decision has been made. But it would it be better just to note that the council has confirmed funding available from um, the provincial growth fund of three million dollars and materially milk milk of nine hundred fifty eight thousand. I'll be happy with that. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 And if, and if it is more than that, then council is going to have to decide how it comes up. Yeah. And well, Mr. Chairman, we're going to be governed by what the community wants. So if the community wants a $9 million library and building, that's fine. That's right. If they only want a $3 million or they, don't want, or they want the library to go back, that's fine by me too. And I'll look up. Yep. So can you hear that? <laughs> I think we're going to be very careful that when we're talking about this project, we, we are immediately jumping to this is the library project. Um, I think, in my mind anyway, the community spaces that we're trying to create are uh, every bit as important mm -hmm. as the library. Uh, because I think that will be the, the key for the future in terms of spaces for community to use, not just for engaging in library activities. But all sorts of other activities like play shows and things so like that. Oh, yeah. Which would no doubt encompass the discussion in regard to uh, the community consultation on what the community rooms and what they actually want in the James Cumming the part of the um, that part of it. So it's not just the library. Mm -hmm. We have to have the other uh, consultation done as well, which is important for the final part of that uh, motion. So we want to read back that. Motion to see we were at that. Third part, so the new amendment is that the council made there was confirmed funding of four million dollars and a rough order of the cost of five point five million for the project. Um, fourth part is that the council made. <coughs> Confirmed funding of $3 million from the French Growth Fund and uh, financial contributions from the Milk for 958000 and the other two of them is So just am I right in saying that's Provincial Growth Fund? Uh, I said government grant. Government grant. Because it was shovel ready, then it became sorry, it was shovel ready, then it became PGF, so we back shovel ready. Uh, <laughs> I, I think government yeah. grant from yeah. yeah. someone from the floor would like to I'll move then. Uh, I think we've got someone from the floor wishes to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's really very interesting to me to engaging with this um, very difficult topic. On the one hand, money, and on the other hand, the well being of our community into the future. Um, so, to me, it's quite clear that central government has given this money for the library, um, partly because they want to provide jobs for all trans people, but also partly because they want to ensure. The libraries are still going to be offering the value to offer well social, economical, educational, etc. well being. Um, it's such a difficult time, um, not knowing what the future will be, but seeing the government putting money into these projects for our future, and me seeing and with my team interacting with customers and coming um, how important a resolution to this problem is. So I appreciate you listening to this. It's exceptionally difficult. Um, for me, I think it's actually perfect timing because we wouldn't have got this extra funding at this time if it wasn't for the situation that we're going to be going with and we can up. So I think we were poised for a decision and I'm um, really looking forward to what you come up with today. And I just wanted to um, Thank you very much for being to speak because I wanted to speak from the point of view of the people of the town and how I use the library and love it. But we're going back to the old library 
I feel it would be very difficult to make a lot of money that would last him the next 40 years. Um, because of the you've seen in the presentations that have been previous to the and I'll see the All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Thank you, councillors. Um, that was a good discussion. Mm. And uh, I think uh, that's an interesting time. We look forward to clearly consultation to see what everyone wants and where we're going to go with this. I think, I think, Mr. Chairman, we must we must get engaged with the community and get everyone to consultate about this, the, the library because at the end of the day, it's for the future, not, not for only for us. I think as uh, councillors, we have a role to make sure that we take on yep. that information as well too to make sure it's definitely coming back. Yeah, I think the, the steps we've made in terms of consultation slash engagement over the last months of the progressive funds and, and the Streets of Life project is a, is a good example of that and seeing the people coming out and talking about what they would like to see in this community and um, you yeah, know I'm, I'm sure there will be a lot of interest in this particular project and and who knows what will come back to council in two months time uh, with the make some, some hard and fast decisions. But just a, a question to the comms person uh, Sonia. Just a, you, you focus very much on, on digital, but will be what, what sort of um, non digital information will be available? Will be into that? Um, I think we've been chair while we started this morning, there'll be images down in the library for people to look at. Um, obviously, the conversations to be had, uh, the newspaper articles directing people to, to where they want to engage, you know, um, the library staff are already taking ideas from people that they want. So all that's being captured, and I'm sure councillors get their ideas too, and um, pass them on to us and we'll capture. So we will be using the likes of the inside. Oh, definitely. Oh, um, all our, all our um, mainstream media, radio, yeah, everything. We're giving that toolkit. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, you don't have to go very far to find a good example. Well, that's 13Ks down the road, where we joined the library and one other building together with a hall in the middle, and it's been very successful. And if the plans can come together to do the same thing, great, let's do it. But it's got to be within four million. Nothing very too in there, is it? Did you? <laughs> 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 Sorry. It's all right. Um, and, and thank you to Mrs. Thompson and the supporters there for your submission. And as you've heard, look, take the opportunity and uh, um, get in there and explain what your group needs and what your requirements are and what, what will be there because um, you know, it's part of the consultation process. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our second. And on the streets alive project, the magic streets. Uh, I think you've already taken the dress away. So the email is simply okay. So um, this I'm going to work our way through it, or are we taking it as a read? Perhaps councils, Councillor Reid, you might want to speak to some of them. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, we've had three successful workshops with the public, with um, people who registered to be there, and um, I attended two of the three workshops and they were actually huge cross-section of the public um, and people came with some great ideas and it was facilitated very well and I just, I was really happy to see the, the positivity that it generated. People were excited, um, very keen to put their ideas forward and just work through the process and I think they've taken it on board really well. And um, Peter Standring and um, the rest of the team, Ramesh, have been very um, vocal and just about the promotion of it, but certainly not um, pushing their own barrows as far as the public goes. It's definitely about by the people, for the people. And um, yeah, I'm looking very forward to the ideas that we've got so far. I'm sure that there'll be further consultation to come and lots of other ideas that will come out of those consultations as well. It's, it's really nice to see the community engagement 
think it's been a very good move. Thank you. So I'll just reaffirm what uh, Councillor Reid said at the end of the workshop on Thursday and um, found it very informative. There was a great cross section of all community there mm. um, and just the differing, um, differing uh, ideas and, and matters that you've, um, you know, after many years of policing this town, it's quite interesting that the ideas that they give you around what you had preconceived ideas of yeah. how our streets work is. Um, different reality sometimes. <laughs> so um, no, I, I think it's very positive and it's a great funding initiative that we've got into. And as the council also noticed in this report, there's a, um, an engagement um, caravan that's coming as well, which will <coughs> no doubt suit purpose well. So and it's from that uh, project funding to the other council. Yeah. Okay. Council, thanks. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'd just like to comment too. I um, went to one of the um, events on Saturday and there was very few people were there but they were quite vocal. I thought that Anne put a run at the workshop extremely well um, and there was some good points as well. I reiterate what your are was saying. It was worthwhile to me. Oh, sorry, no. sorry, just wanted to add one thing, if I may. Um, it was quite interesting out of the two nights that there were some ideas that just rose up and um, across both nights. And so it was quite interesting to see that a lot of the members of the public were um, thinking along the same lines, which sort of gives confirmation to those projects as they move forward. And, and I'm sort of hoping too that with the caravan, um, we could possibly use that for the library consultation in supermarkets or places like that as well. Is that a possibility or not? Uh, through the chair, uh, it was our initial aim, but I think just given the time constraints, um, a bit tight. I'd be ready in time. Uh, if it is certainly that would be a Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so, if we just move, uh, just recommendation. Move that. I'm happy to move that recommendation. And the third item is obviously the uh, post COVID 19 response from our comms and marketing manager uh, to report there some of the great work that's going on. So, do you want to take this read or speak to it? or? Uh, through the chair, I'm happy to take questions. I think it's going to be explanatory. Um, the business competence survey I think is quite interesting. I think um, with the environment and the landscape we have today, I don't think anyone's quite sure it's going to be able to do anything else, particularly with, um, with the economy and uh, various bits and pieces. But I see um, the work that's gone on there has been, uh, it's been quite um, economically done, and I know there's been a great commitment from the um, Council start and getting it just correctly tall there. So um, I think it's uh, it's been a great team or a great team job there. So um, if someone would just make another discussion, uh, Councillor Davis, reports okay. received. Yep, see you, Councillor Graham. These we have eight items or any other agenda items. Discussion on uh, call the meeting uh, 